Hey, it's Nick here with Blue Ridge Audio. I wanted to talk about the Dumble Overdrive Special Amp Topography um, and the differences throughout the years. Um, so he never made two amps the same, but there were kind of a couple variations in the Overdrive Special Topography um, that I am building kind of a similar amp to that uh, need a little bit more uh, in-depth description. So. The earlier Dumble Overdrive specials um, have this basic topography where the clean channel cascades into the overdrive channel and then the master volume is after the channel switching relay before it hits the phase inverter in the power amp. And um, so you have your first tube stage here as the clean channel, your second tube, your second 12AX7 is the overdrive channel, the third one is your um, phase inverter and then these are your two power tubes. The guitar tone the guitar signal comes into V1 you get a gain increase and then with that gain increase you're using the tone stack to filter certain frequencies to ground. Okay so um, treble metal bass control is there um, all of the preamp switches are in here and your boost functions are in here. So the preamp boost and the mid boost basically just defeat certain parts of the tone stack to allow more signal through at certain frequencies. And then here you have your preamp gain. So this is going to set the amount of compression and uh, that's that's happening here at the second tube stage, how hard you're driving it. And then from there you can choose to turn on your overdrive channel or leave it off. It'll just kind of idle and then the clean signal will pass on to the master volume. Right, so when the overdrive is engaged, your clean signal is coming out, hitting this pre-overdrive um, filter section, and then your first overdrive tube stage. This is your gain control, so how much gain and saturation you're getting out of the overdrive channel. And then the overdrive level is like the overdrive master, and his amps it was sometimes called ratio. Um, because the way you set this amp up is essentially you set this knob first, and then your output volume for the clean channel is right here. And then you turn on your overdrive, you set the amount of drive you want, and then you can switch back and forth between two, the two channels to set the ratio or how much louder or quieter um, you want the overdrive channel to be than the clean channel. So um, these two are kind of always in circuit together. And uh, this one is the last one that has kind of the final say and uh, that will be just on the overdrive channel okay um the later versions the what he called the hot rotted marshall amps um where's my eraser <clears throat> so what i'm calling the modern preamp is based on the mid 80s to 90s overdrive specials where he moves the master to the other side of the channel switching relay for the clean channel. So this now becomes the clean channel master and it functions more independently. From the overdrive. Okay. Um, and the other thing he did was he added a tone stack for post overdrive filtering. Um, and this is more like a Marshall tone stack. So the modern um, configuration is a little bit more complex. There's more parts. There's that added tone stack. Um, more does not necessarily mean better, okay? It's just different. Um, both of these amps are going to sound really similar because of the basic topography being the clean channel cascading then into the overdrive channel. And the clean channel is not much different. There's very little change that happens between these two and the clean channel. Main difference is the tone stack and the change in where the master is, okay? Um, but having that post-OD filtering basically allows the overdrive um, to get a lot more gainy. If you want to go for high gain Marshall kind of sounds, this setup is going to get you there. The uh, classic 
has a more open, uncompressed overdrive sound. It's really good for low, low gain overdrive sounds, but as you push it into higher gain and more saturated tones um, for leads and stuff, it will be a little bit more rowdy and a little bit more loose or edgy, okay? But whereas this one is gonna be smoother and more like liquid kind of lead tones, all right? Um, <clears throat> both still gonna be similar and in the Dumble camp, just different, okay? Um, so that's the modern arrangement versus the classic. Um, there's also, I'm offering different power amp configurations. So I'm offering the headroom, which is sort of the main, like the standard I think that uh, most people are gonna like because it's the most transparent, clean, loud um, power amp. Okay, so it's basically gonna take what's happening up here and just make it louder and push it out to the speaker. Um, you have a really fat, um, punchy bass response that's not muddy or farty and um, it's not gonna distort very easily um, when you start cranking the masters up, okay? Uh, the drive version is basically gonna allow less negative feedback through, which is gonna let the power tubes come out to play in terms of adding their own saturation and overdrive um, when you start cranking the master volumes up. So once this really only comes into play when your master volumes are getting um, above around 12 o'clock or above all right um the high headroom version is going to have more negative feedback it's going to stay in that kind of hi-fi high bandwidth um output whereas the drive is going to have less negative feedback so the power tubes are going to start distorting earlier and compressing and in order to keep them playing nice and from getting too ugly in the distortion, I have to filter out some of the bass in the output section. So it's not gonna have the same punch um, and like transient response for like pick attacks. So it's not gonna be as sharp, it's gonna be more rounded and, and sort of squishy. Um, so a good thing to kind of mention is with dynamics, there's two different kinds of dynamics. We have amplitude dynamics where you dig in and you get louder sounds and you back off and you get quieter sounds. And then there's drive dynamics where if you dig in, you're gonna get more overdrive and more saturation and compression, but the volume's gonna stay about the same. And then when you back off, you're getting a cleaner sound, um, again, at about the same volume. So that's an overdrive dynamic versus an amplitude dynamic. Um, I'd say that the, the headroom basically allows you to control everything from the preamp. Um, and then uh, it does, the headroom version does get to some crunch when you start really cranking the masters, uh, but the crunch is gonna be harder edged and less, um, maybe a little less musical if you're looking for like a smoother tone, but I like kind of the crunch that it gives. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, and finally, the only other option I haven't really discussed yet is the buffered tube effects loop. So what comes standard is the passive effects loop here. These are just two jacks with a switching um, jack here for connecting the signal. When you plug something in, that breaks this connection and then you know your effects send goes to the input and then the output of the effects comes back into the return. Um, if we were to add the tube buffered effects loop, essentially you're getting another tube stage. So it's a little bit more complexity in the amp. Um, and it's there regardless of whether you're using it. This will become V4. So now we have the two buffered effects loop within the, with the send and return level controls, um, which you can use to add a little bit extra, a little extra spice if you want, if you're not using any effects, or you can use, drive your effects and keep the, uh, the signal levels where the effects are happy. Okay. Um, 
Well, that pretty much, this is not something that he would install in the amps. Um, there's a couple reasons for that, but I think the main thing is that it can't be bypassed without imparting a lot of noise. So I'm just going to hardwire it in. Uh, so it can't be bypassed and these are always going to be in play, um, which is how most people would want it anyway. You're, you're, you got that extra tube, might as well use it, right? Um, and yeah, I'll get into more detail in terms of what's going on in the tone stack um, in another video, but I think this is enough now just to have a quick overview, 10,000 foot, like what's going on? Why are there so many different options? Um, it's because uh, <clears throat> it's really just like, tailoring the amp for the kind of sounds you're after and uh, I hope to get like actual sound demos of these amps side by side once I have multiple of them available um, but all in due time and uh, hope this clears up some questions.